Hi loves, I'm back with a Q&A and instead of reaching down because my computer is down here, I don't know if you could see it, I'm gonna just hold my computer while we talk um, until I get a better setup. But I know you guys already know, I say it a million times um, and we'll just deal with it until I can get a better setup. But today's video is going to be how much to send to or how much I suggest that you send to an inmate um, monthly and how to know if he's using you and asking you for too much money. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Ro. I am the founder of Strong Prison Wives and Families and I use my years of experience to help prison wives and family members feel educated, empowered, supported, and loved not only while their loved ones are serving time, but long after they get home if you stick with me and use the tools and exercises that I provide to you. They will get out, they will stay out, you will beat statistics, you will break stigma, and you will live happily ever after. So let's get started. Here is the question that I received from one of our beautiful members right here on YouTube. I love to shout you guys out. I'm just curious to know how much money does a federal inmate need to be comfortable for a month? That would be a great subject for a video. You got it, sweetheart, I agree. If you haven't already, sometimes I don't think I've done that already, or if I haven't, or if I have, it's been way in the past, so it was time for an update anyway, so I absolutely love this question. Sometimes I feel like he's using me for money, for the bad habits, for his bad habits, while I'm struggling to make the bills, but I also don't want to assume. P.S. Be proud of yourself. You've created something extraordinary. It helps millions. I know your videos help, have helped me through whoops, through this lonely life that only a prison wife or girlfriend would understand. God bless and never get up, give up. Thank you so, so much for those sweet words. You guys already know that that's what gets me through. That's how I know that I am actually using my experiences and my struggles for a purpose and to not become bitter and to actually help you. So I can't even tell you, I know you said my videos help you, but your words back to me, knowing that they help you, help me so much as well. So from the bottom of my heart, I can't thank you enough. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of this video. I actually called in backup for the answer to this video. I asked my husband, Adam, who has been in federal prison for close to 20 years for a breakdown of everything he spends money on each month. So I can give you facts and figures. I don't have to tell you how much you need to spend, but I can um, help you make your own decision based off of what he needs. Now, again, Adam is in the federal system. It's probably similar in state systems, but state to state and security levels may vary. So just know that this is for the feds. He is in an FCI, which is um, a minimum security federal prison, but often across the board in the feds, things are the same because things like phone minutes and commissary are gonna cost either the same or very similar. They're all only allowed 300 minutes a month on the phone, across the board in the, vet, the feds and that kind of a thing. So he said, here are the basic expensive it, expenses in the feds. And pardon me for looking down, but I didn't memorize this, of course. And I didn't plan this very well, so I'm holding my computer. I don't have a sticky note or my iPad or anything, but which is kind of making me sweat, but you guys, bear with. So 300 phone minutes are $67 without a local calling number. And we will get into local, local calling numbers either later or on um, a later video where I can break down all of the different services and what they cost and how to go about getting them, which is super helpful, but you have to kind of be creative with it because certain ways of doing it can be considered a third party, which is illegal, at least in the federal system, most states, according to a lot of the men and women that I've spoken to who have a loved one in the state system. So you just have to use ones that are approved and not ones that will get you um, either charged or just usually you don't get charged for it, the inmate, usually it's just that phone number doesn't work anymore, but we'll talk about that later. So it's $67 for 300 minutes a month for the phone, 300 true links credits, which are the credits that the federal inmates use for the core links email system. Those are $15 for 300 minutes, um, or I'm sorry, 300 credits, which is 600 credits for $30 and there is no discount. So what he's trying to say is 300 credits for $15 or 600 credits for $30, one credit per minute. And so you know how out here sometimes like it's um, 
one thing for five, two for eight. You know, if you buy in bulk or if you buy more, there's a little bit more of a discount if you're buying more at one time. It doesn't matter if he buys 300 or 600 at the same time, it's a dollar for a minute regardless. Um, and I'm assuming the way that he says this, you could buy it in chunks of 300 or 600 credits. Now for as far as commissary essentials, approximately $40 he spends a month, which would be $2.60, $2.60 on toothpaste, $3.65 on deodorant, um, $1.50 on bar soap, which I told him when he comes home, he's doing using um, shower gel and he's like, no, I'm just gonna stick with bar soap. And I'm like, you're disgusting. Just kidding. Um, but I'm like, wait until you try my organic shower soap and shower gel and we'll see what you think. Um, why do I tangent? I'm not gonna tangent, I'm sorry. I know this is serious. $2.60 on shampoo and then um, $10 for three packs. I don't know how it comes. I don't know if it's jars. I know it's instant coffee, but I don't know exactly how that's packaged, but it's um, 10 for three. And then he spends approximately $20 on food and snacks. And Adam eats very healthy. So food and snacks will be like packs of mackerel. And I know he uses olive oil and um, nuts. And sometimes if there's like a protein bar or a protein shake, he'll get that. But he's not buying things like sticky buns or Snickers or ice cream when it comes out. And I don't know if that stuff is cheaper in there or more expensive. Um, like it's cheaper out here. But I'm assuming it's going to be the same. I don't know. But he says about $20 for foods and snacks. So grand total is approximately $120 a month. And that is low end. And that is only covering base essentials. And what he's including in there is emails and um, it's emails, phone calls, and then base, base, base essentials for as far as coming out of the commissary. Um, so the national commissary monthly monthly spending limit is $360. So you're only allowed to spend maximum $360 a month in the federal prison system in their commissary. Um, where was, where was I? Um, and much of that, okay, so for those with means, for those that can afford that, he said this is an easy number to reach. Each facility, each facility offers slightly different different things and they there it's going to be different slightly from facility to facility um as far as monthly expenses much of it depends on the food quality and the portion sized the portion sizes that are served in the dining hall some other monthly expenses include okay hold on one second so what he's saying is like for example adam hurt his knee really badly he tore his acl back like maybe 15 years ago. I have no idea how long ago. So he was going to get surgery. He was moved for surgery. He was moved to a medical facility, which back then was Fort Devens up in, I want to say that's like up near Boston. So up there, because it's medical and you have a lot of guys that are coming in with, I don't know if there's a women's facility there too, but I know for sure it's a men's facility. And this was again, quite a few years ago. And I know things have changed at Devens, but back then it was um, a lot of men were coming in with cancer and heart problems and either dying or um, just it was a medical facility. So the food quality was a lot better. They got a lot more variety. They got a lot more fruits and vegetables. So then, I mean, he was eating like a king and it was very different back then. Things have slowly um, just gone downhill over the years as far as food quality, as far as treatment and a lot of stuff in the system as far as rules getting a little bit more tense and not always necessarily making the most sense but back then you know they got he had access to fruit he had access to vegetables he had access to higher quality foods so in that location he spent a lot less at the commissary buying himself food versus now where he is the food quality is is extremely poor for example for breakfast there it's either um sugary cereals they have, I think, pancake day. There is always some sort of yellow cake for breakfast and then you can get milk and, and sometimes you can get like a banana or an apple or an orange, maybe like a half a piece. So for breakfast, he will go in, he'll get milk, he'll get fruit and then he'll eat on his own. He'll eat oatmeal and then something, whatever he can conjure up for protein. So that is all stuff he's going to have to buy on his own out of the commissary. But back when he was in Devon's, it was a little bit different. He could get a much higher quality meal and he's trying to eat for health. As, as healthy as he can considering the system itself. And you know what, you guys comment below and let me know. I should probably do a video on food and food quality and um, 
a lot of stuff in the prison system and how they can eat as healthily as possible because I went to a lecture last year at the prisoner family, I'm sorry, two years ago at the prisoner family conference and there was a man who was formerly incarcerated in a camp in the feds for I think like 18 months or something like that and he had access to people who worked um, in the kitchen and he was telling us things that blew my mind. Like they made me want to cry, the girls, the Strong Prison Wives members because it was a meetup and I who when at the time we're just looking at each other like, oh my God, this is disgusting. How are we gonna detox our husbands when they come, come home? Which I can help you with because you guys know me in nutrition, but also how we're gonna keep them as healthy as possible as we can while they're being fed that crap. A lot of it being expired and not fit for human consumption. And I'm not even making that up. This is, these are things that were labeled on those boxes and I will get into that in another video. Comment below if you want that. So, um, okay, so let's go into what he said is some of uh, the other monthly expenses that they will need. Um, and so you know how to budget monthly and see if he's asking you for way too much. So laundry contracts, which laundry contracts. Okay, so what he means is if you don't pay, his words were, I'm sorry, guys, it's really hot in here in front of these lights. There's no AC on. If you don't, want your clothes to come back dingy and still basically dirty is what he wrote here. But what he means is, so as far as laundry being washed and dried and fulfilled for you at the facility, what they do, at least where he is and where he's been in the past, is they will put your clothes inside, tightly inside of a laundry bag. They throw all of those laundry bags in the wash. Then they throw some powdered soap or whatever on top of it in the laundry machine. So imagine tightly packed clothes inside a laundry bag with a hundred other laundry bags and these industrial size machines with like a scoop of soap on top. That's not really getting your clothes clean. And there's the clothes aren't moving around. They're not breathing. They're not getting where you have the sweat and the stains and all of that. The, the soap and the water isn't necessarily getting to it. Once it's done, it'll go through the dryer and you'll get it back dingy, still dirty, probably stained. It's just not the best system. So if you want to pay a laundry guy and make sure that your clothes are coming back clean, potentially pressed if you want to pay for that, folded very nicely, not just balled up and, and kept inside of this laundry bag, then that's another monthly expense. And that's up to him if he decides that he wants to do it. Is it a necessity? Absolutely not. But is it something he might want to do? I know Adam enjoys doing that because it's just much more convenient and the way that they work out in there, the way at least he works out, majority of people work out when you're sweating and there's no AC in the summer and it hits almost 100 degrees, you want, you need your clothes clean because they're going to last you longer. So it's going to cost less money in the end because you're not going to have to replace them as often. And also it's just, it's, it's gross. Imagine wearing dirty, dingy, disgusting, smelly clothes every day. That, I mean, I personally understand why he pays for it. Is it a necessity? No. Is it a luxury? I, I think it's somewhere in between. Okay, ironing contracts. So that's approximately $10 a month. Um, most often there is at least one guy in each, use, each unit who has this hustle locked down, he said. So you could pay somebody to iron to press your clothes. So for visit, like Adam, it depends. Sometimes if he has time, you know, he and if he has time and everyone's like, all he has is time. He has 213 years. He keeps himself very busy. He runs workout classes. He runs educational classes. He teaches a lot of different classes. He um, takes some different classes. He goes to, he supports his friends that run classes. So like he goes to their AA meetings. He goes to um, all different education. He's always in rec recreation. He always has something going on. In the meantime, he, around all that, he's trying to fit in getting onto the emails to contact me, all of his illegal contacts, his family, his friends, and then also the phone. So he is pretty, and you have to remember inside, they have these movements, the level he's at, so they can tell you when he can, when you can move from area to area. So you might be locked in someplace for an hour or two longer than you had anticipated. So there isn't a lot of time. I will get into movements. Comment below if you want me to explain what those are as well for you guys that aren't either don't have them because you're, you're at a lower level and they can move freely or you're not really involved in this system. You just want to learn about it or you just want to know the differences with the feds or whatever the reason is that you want to know about it. Because in the beginning, I was like, what are you talking about? I had no idea that they couldn't move freely from area to area within the prison. So comment below and I will explain what those are or if you're new at it. That's the other thing I wanted to say. OK, so OK, that said. 
Every once in a while, he will iron himself if he just doesn't feel like paying somebody, if he doesn't have the extra money for it, or if they're trying to really hustle him and overcharge him, he's like, no, I got this. But if he has no time and let's say he has a visit and he needs his stuff pressed, then every once in a while he will shell out the money for that. And the contract he said here is $10 a month usually. Now remember, it's gonna vary. It's gonna vary as far as um, supply and demand. It's gonna marry, matter as far as where they are and what the demand is for at that facility and what people charge there. You guys know it's just like buying anything out here. It's just like any service out here. It depends on where in the country you live. It depends on how much of a demand there is for that, etc. Commissary contracts. So again, in the feds where he is, some you are allowed to shop on only a certain day of either the week or the month. I don't know how often they get to shop. So at the commissary. However, if you want to shop first, if you want to be pushed up in line, you can um, pay for a contract with one of the workers in commissary, which they're not supposed to do. And Adam does not. And it actually really pisses him off that they do that. But you can pay. It is depending. He put a question mark. Every unit has um, no, I'm sorry, wrong spot. Approximately $10 to shop early, quickly, or at an unassigned time. So you can get there earlier than the time. Like, let's say they say you can get there at nine o'clock in the morning. You might be able to get there at six when they open up and shop. Um, the guy might be able to look and see that you're there and shop. And then again, he also told me this isn't necessarily the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't run as efficiently as it should. If 10 guys, I have two hands, I swear. If 10 guys are trying to pay to be the first one to shop at nine o'clock in the morning on Tuesday and all 10 up show there, 10 show up there, then someone's gonna be first and someone's gonna be last. And they're all paying the same price. So just remember that. Okay, cooking contracts. So every unit has at least a couple of microwave chefs who contract to cook meals for guys daily. Or you could do meals for specific things like Adam has bought wraps or cheesecakes for people for their birthdays or graduations or some sort of a celebration. So you can contract to do it daily and that's going to be your monthly charge or you can contract to do it every once in a while, which isn't necessarily a contract. It's just, hey, I'm going to give you 10 bucks to cook for 50 of us, something like that. So that could be um, an expense. I'm sorry, I'm disgusting. I'm wiping my sweat off on camera, but it is seriously hot in here and I don't want to put the fan on because you'll hear it. Okay, so um, stamps for kitchen and food contracts. So if you want somebody who works in the kitchen to get you things like fruits, vegetables, eggs, certain meats, stuff that is not available in the commissary, but the um, guys that work in the kitchen will get it out, smuggle it out, and they will... Um, no, I, I feel comfortable talking about this on camera, you guys, because Adam sent it to me knowing that I was going to talk about it on a video. They, these things aren't necessarily... Um, 100% legit to do on the inside and it can potentially get them in trouble. But that said, it's been happening for years and it's just kind of a known thing that happens on the society that runs and how it runs on the inside. If you do get caught with some of this stuff, it can be considered contraband and they'll take it away from you. Very worse search, they'll charge you, but I really haven't heard of that in ages. But um, I mean, unless it's something like tomatoes to make wine and you're a known wine maker, then you might get yourself in trouble. But if he said it here, I feel very comfortable saying it on video, saying it on video. So you might pay somebody something for that. And that honestly, they pay in stamps, which is their currency in there. Like we have dollars. They obviously don't have any access to dollars. And these aren't dollars that are coming in through the books that you're sending. They um use stamps as their currency. And I'll get into that another time as well. Um, and then so cell cleaning contracts, it's $10 where he is to have the cell cleaned and the floor buffed once a week and an occasional strip and wax. What an occasional is, um, is up to I'm sure the person and whoever they're dealing with. So again, not a necessity, more of a luxury, but that's something that you could decide if you want to do or have done if you have the money to do that. Um, Let's see, a weights or a workout contract. So the gym orderly holds down weights or equipment and a set up time for your crew each day. So think about it, 500 people vying for the same equipment in the gym. You can get somebody who works in the gym to wait by, let's say, the, the bench press machine until you get there when, at your contracted time. You're going to pay him to do that, to hold it for you. So it's a luxury. 
um, personal trainer contracts. Prices vary widely in one small group or one-on-one, -on -one, and then you can include nutrition or not. So that is just something that you're gonna have to talk to and contract with your person. Um, newspapers or magazines. So he doesn't know the exact price of that, but exclusive access to latest editions coming into the library. You could pay the library person for that. Everybody in there has a hustle, clearly. Um, barbershop. So it's approximately three to five dollars per cut or monthly contract to reserve a time slot each week. Um, Self-explanatory. So peaches, nachos, sodas, and snacks from inmate vendors, especially during football season. This is going back to what we were talking about with the microwave chefs, where you will pay somebody to cook for you or for a group of people. Let's say you're all getting together to watch Sunday football. I'm so sweaty. Okay. Next is a fantasy football league. That is approximately eight to ten dollars. Um, per week to be involved in this fantasy football week. And then there's custom cards, leather crafts, ceramics, crocheted gifts, all of that varies in price. Um, and I do know that like some of these leather bags are very on par with the price of custom bags out here, three to $600 and upwards, because they are one, one of a kind custom made, two, made with very um, good parts of the hide that they're using, the leather that they're using, and also uh, you can get also designer knockoffs if you want. You can send them a picture of a bag that you like and they will recreate it. I don't know if they charge, you know, similar to, let's say if you want to knock off Michael Kors or Coach bag, if they'll charge you, let's say if the Michael Kors bag is $600, if they're going to charge you $600, but they might charge you four, depends on the person. Um, okay, and then the last thing is program completion certifications. So first thing, most guys ask for at A and O, which is admissions and orientation. When they come into this new facility, they all go through an orientation process. The first thing that most guys usually ask there is that um, when can they get offered, um, wait, he didn't write this right. They get offended when we tell them that that's not how it works here. So he's saying the first thing that people ask is when they can get program completion certifications. When can they buy, instead of taking a class and get a certification, when can they buy that is what they're asking. And Adam says, no, that's not how it works here at my facility. He will not let that happen. He said, obviously most places they're readily available and usually most places condone it as an incentive for the inmates who are instructing the classes to do that. But since they get paid very little, they do this because one, they get paid very little and two, it fulfills staff requirements. So it's just kind of a hush hush done real quick, but they don't do that there. But as far as if they are doing it at that facility, not that he condones doing it because come on, like you're getting a certification so you can gain knowledge in this area. So you can take that knowledge back with you into the real world. So why would you want to fake that? You know, you want that knowledge. He, you want as his wife or his girlfriend or his family member, significant other, you want him to do that work, to acquire that knowledge. So he doesn't come out here, like he twiddled his thumbs. He bought 15 certifications. He comes up here and he has no idea how to use them because he never really actually got trained in how to use them. See what I'm saying? So if I were his wife and he wants to do that, I would highly discourage him from doing that. And personally, I wouldn't send him the money for that. Um, he said... Okay, that's it. He just said that's about it. And then he thought that this might be a good idea for a video for me to do with Poochie, the, um, the inmate that got out after serving 10 years in the feds. Um, and he can answer questions on the live video that you guys have. So if you guys want that, that you guys have, that you guys will see that we will do. So if you guys want me to um, answer questions about that and you want me to do a live video with him, just comment below and we'll get that all set up. But actually, I'm going to link the last video I did with him because he mentioned kind of stuff about that, um, but more along the lines of like how that transfers into um, re-entry and after release because that's what that last video was focused on. But I will link that up there because it was an awesome one. Poochie, the, the videos that I film live with Poochie where he's answering our questions from the perspective of somebody who was in there and doing like a tell all. Here's what my honest opinion from somebody who served time. They are my most watched, liked and commented live videos. So again, post it up there and I will let you guys know. You guys let me know actually down below in the comments if you want um, another live video with Poochie. So the second part of this question is this. How do I know if he's using me? 
And here's my answer to you, sweetheart. And I just touched upon this in a video um, that I did over Labor Day last weekend, and I'm going to link that one up here in the YouTube cards as well. But you're asking me that for a reason, okay? So I want you to get really in tune and in touch with this thing that we as women were born with and we're blessed with, and it's called intuition. What does your gut say? If you're asking me, I think that he's um, using me. I think he's asking me for too much money. Something is not jiving with you. Something sounds wrong. Like in that video, I was explaining that one of the girls had to put money on the books of his friend because he's saying that he can't, he gets more charges and his friends does it, which that's a red flag to me. But then they use all the money and he said it was money that his sister, he thought his sister sent. It was just this long drawn out saga that sounded bogus and illegitimate. So her red flag had gone up like her she was like that doesn't seem right if he's giving you these stories if things are winding up missing if he just needs more and more you know his shoes got stolen this and that then yes absolutely you'll know that something is off if he just gets if he gets pissed off at you because you don't have the money if he gets really angry and he yells at you because you won't um send him more than you already sent him you know talk to him really figure out what he needs the money for, how much he needs the money for. You can even comment below and say, he's telling me he needs money for this and I will answer it as best as I can. We'll have our members answer it as best as they can and I will contact my husband and ask him if that is actually legitimate and if it seems real. But what I can tell you is, no, you might not never know, you might not ever know if they are using you until it's too late, until he comes home and you know it doesn't work out, but you know, if things don't seem right, you know, if he's asking for too much, you know, if things go missing or if things just are off, you know, something's wrong. So, um, that's it. Now that said, I don't think that that's what the instance was with this woman. I think she was very new and she was just trying to get a feel for how much she should be sending. I think it's 450 a month and I'm not the one that says that money, but that's about what Adam spent 350 to 450 a month. Um, and that might seem like a lot. I mean, that's a lot for me to send. I can't send him that, but he's lucky that he has other family members and friends who are able to help him out where I fall short. So he could easily be spending that much. And, you know, and, and like Adam said, there's things that are necessities and to me eating healthy and, you know, having a contract with a food guy to me, that's a necessity to your guy. It might not be, he might not be into his nutrition. He might be fine with eating cold cereal with sugar in it every single day. It's the things that are the necessities. And then other things like, you know, an extra pair of shoes, or like he said, a guy that does your laundry or a guy that cooks for you, then that's not necessarily a necessity. And you could say, listen, I can't afford it. So figure out what exactly it is that he needs, figure out exactly how much he needs a month and figure out before you even talk to him, what you can budget a month because you don't want to go without out here. You don't want to neglect your children. You don't want to neglect your bills and you don't want to neglect yourself because you can only go on for so long before one things start falling apart Two, I know I had a member who I love, love, love dearly very early on when she was still learning this, she was starting to sell off her furniture. She was about to lose her house. She was working three or four jobs. She was running herself ragged. It was so uncomfortable because they, they didn't know, they didn't find that balancing act yet. So you need to figure out exactly what you can afford every month and then have that conversation with him and then tell him, listen, I can give you 50 a month. So, you know, figure out what you can do with that 50. Where does that need to go? Do you need to limit your calls? Maybe do you need to go down to once a month? I mean, I'm sorry, to once a week versus every day or even once a day versus multiple times a day. I could tell you this, Adam and I speak on the phone very infrequently, maybe once a week, unless I'm traveling to visit home from visit and he wants to know I made it home safely because it's going to be locked down before he can get an email from me because you know there's that delay I will link my core links videos up there so you know what I'm talking about um how the federal email system works and why there's that delay the email messages don't go through right away but the point is he'll call me at those times but I don't get a call from him every day I'm lucky if I get a call from him once a week but that's how we budget our money because I know he I'm content with those infrequent phone calls because we use email every single day. We're blessed to have that. Um, and then we will communicate different ways so he can spend his money in different areas. He doesn't have to buy all 300 of those minutes. Um, so again, just work it out, figure it out, talk it out. 
if I didn't, I just read that email. I'm really, really, really hot. I'm sweating. I'm sure you could tell. So if there was something that I didn't touch upon or something you want me to elaborate on more, just comment below and I will be happy, happy, happy to do that for you. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you beautiful men and women in the next one. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a, a video. Ding that notification bell if you want to be notified every single time I post a video, it'll go right to your inbox. So you know that it's there waiting for you. Um, waiting, click the button. Will, <coughs> excuse me. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.